welcome back to Jeff Kunange Live at Citizen Television. It's a heated discussion tonight with two young, I would say, legislators because Hassan Omar was a senator from Mombasa and he's still very active. He was in ODM slash NASA. Now he's solidly in Jubilee. My other guest, uh, Narok Senator Ladama Olakina. I actually thought he was in, in Jubilee at one point, but I'm, uh, he corrected me saying he went independent because the old man, remember the old man, he had told him not to stand yet, but he, I guess uh, he insisted. Gentlemen, let's well, continue the conversation. I was uh, in Wiper. Oh, I'm sorry. There. Okay, okay. And the, and, the, and the opinions expressed here are largely my own. <laughs> <laughs> what about the tweets? Uh, the tweets, I mean, the, the opinions expressed here. Yeah. Uh, what I say is largely my opinion. Right. It's not, uh, the person who speaks for Jubilee but, is, uh, will be but too the, Jew. The senator here was saying um, when, you were at, when you were in Wiper slash NASA, you were anti Jubilee Damu. Yes. Damu. I don't know what happened. I mean, one wonders, huh? As I said, if you looked at, my, at the time when I, when I was saying I'm now moving towards aligning myself with Jubilee, I put together the rationale behind it. First and foremost, uh, I made it very clear that most of the issues that mitigated that shift were largely based on the issues around Mombasa. I had felt that, I'd, uh, that uh, deliberately or by design, there was uh, a scheme to perpetuate a certain leadership in Mombasa, mm -hmm. which at that time proved incompetent even on some of the most basic things like garbage collection. There was you and cry across board from, uh, from, the, from the members of uh, uh, the business community about you know heavy exorbitant uh, uh, rates of doing business, the, 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 the small scale businesses. Uh, people who said they had to part with uh, you know uh, certain incentives, uh, flats and other kinds of issues when before they got any approval from the county. So there was so much uh, uh, barrage of, uh, of, uh, of, of issues that bedeviled Mombasa County. So I aligned myself with Jubilee at that time. And you recall that time Raila had even not withdrawn from the game. And I say that it was untenable for the people of Mombasa to have a Joho governor and a Raila presidency because he, it will have been tr transforming Mombasa into a banana republic. So you go in, in terms of seeking an allyship that can then help you to deflate some of the core issues uh, that Mombasa yeah. was We'll talk face. about secession in a moment. Ladama, uh, you talked about a Raila presidency and there's an inauguration, according to James Orengo, of Raila Odinga in the next two weeks. What does that mean? I have to be very honest with you and very straightforward. We believe that Raila won the election on the 26th and on the 8th of August. In fact, let me base my argument on the 8th of August. We strongly believe that Raila is the president of this country. You know? Yeah. And um, we, we know that the people, you know, people think that uh, resist, uh, you know, a revolution is, is actually eating ice cream or resistance is a romantic holiday. Kenyans have spoken. And all the actions that we are taking, we are going to bring a million people to this city so that we can bring business on a standstill, so that people can really now believe that Raila Amol Odinga is indeed the president. But Senator, he is not. So what happens once he's inaugurated? I mean, it, it, that's against the law. Let's face it. I think, I think the most important thing is that we are focused and we say that we are going to establish uh, people's uh, assemblies. We're doing that across the country. That is guaranteed and it is protected by the Constitution. So are you going to leave the Senate? You know, you have to, be, to get this very clear. We never say that legislators should stop being legislators. We say they will make a part of this people assembly. When we go to Narok, even though in Narok we don't enjoy a majority, in terms of the NASA coalition, mm -hmm. I will lead the people to, a people's, assembly. to a people's assembly. We're going to sit down, discuss, and where we enjoy the majority, what we are going to do is that we are going to sponsor motions in those county assemblies. For what? Who, who's to discuss pass? about our issues and then chat our way forward. Hassan Omar, help me out. I, 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 maybe I'm a little confused here, but d does this uh, make sense? See, for me, I, sometimes I, don't, I wish, even don't wish to comment on those issues because they they are hallucinations. Why? You can, you can believe. You know, a lot of people in Mombasa, Why? when they're on the cut ecstasy, or they're on the ecstasy of Shisha, they will say, this building belongs to me. 
by the by the time he's sober, sobbed up, he, he that building actually does not belong to him. You believing Raila Odinga is president is one thing. Whether he actually is is another thing altogether. The the, the constitutional processes in this country are self-propelling. You see, there's, there has been a lot of uh, patience uh, from the other side of the political divide not to engage in a dogfight in a manner that will jeopardize the stability and uh, you know, the unity of the nation. Whether we like it or not, Jeff, let me be honest with you. My four years in experience in politics have told me Kenyan politics is not, are not very complex. It is a, it's a, it's an organization of uh, groupings coming together on one side and an organization of other groupings coming together on another side. One outfoxes the other in terms of political competition. Mm. Political competition, of essence, is divisive. Can't politics divides you, even if you were to have an election here of who is going to be the head of the journalists in Citizen TV, you will divide one another. <laughs> I'll, one of you might win by a vote or two. That I was seeing the Kenya Parliamentary Journalist Association had one of their chairpersons re-elected by one vote. Elections divide people. And worst of all, if your fodder for the electioneering is based on nothing but ethnic arrangements. I was happy with the Raila interview. For the first time, he was very sincere about the fact that uh, it's not reforms they are looking for. He says there are other ethnic groups no. that feel excluded. That is not Because true. you cannot tell me the people in Rift Valley, the people in central Kenya, and other pockets of Kenya that vote for Uhuru or vote for Ruto, Yang Sang, or, uh, or the professors there think that he's a despot or is, 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 is defeating the constitution. You arrange a politics that is based on ethnic math. If you live by the sword, you must learn how to you die know, by it. Let me just, so, let me just interject so ultimately, there. what you do now, let me, be, let me conclude this point. Mm -hmm. uh, people are, 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 a bit, are a bit hesitant to say this point. When they say that we want the presidency that is inclusive, they actually they're actually profiling a certain committee X of the Koinangas. The, the whole idea here, even as I was making my shift to, to, to Jubilee, quite a number of the opinions I got is So you gang up to try now and profile a certain community. And all of you uh, come up with the pretext that you're fighting for reforms, while your actual quest is that, that simple quest for power. Mm -hmm. I agree with some of the members of the civil society. They're extremely sincere in their quest for reforms. I was there and I will never vilify groups that I have extreme, uh, uh, extreme respect for. But here you are, you, you try to go and associate with Moi, you hit a wall, you associate with Kibak, you hit a wall, you associate with the same Ruto. Ruto was once a reformer in the, in the definition of Odia. When he brought Raila no, three let million me, votes, let me, let me just when he brought Raila you. three million votes, mm and brought him some resources. Yeah. He was put on a billboard as a Pentagon member. Correct. Senator. Now, let, let me just, you know, the senator here, the former senator, mm -hmm. has actually gone straight to the point of what is ailing this nation. This is the ethnic supremacy is the biggest problem we have in this country. You know, where you feel like two communities feel like they own this country. And if it's not their way, it's the highway. What we are saying is that in this country, there are 40 five different tribes of people who live in this country and their input in how the economy develops. We cannot have a state which is built in ethnocracy whereby the, the citizens, I mean the, that state looks at some of its citizens as being poor, backwards, and they only use them as a market for their goods. We've got to look at a state that is all inclusive. What is ailing this country? And what the senator is not even uh, trying to understand is that this constitution that we have right now, that allows us to pick it, w did not just come that easily. People were arrested. People lost their lives. People spent years in cold cells. So nothing in this country came easy. So when he says that it's a lot of um, people complaining back and forth, I want to remind him that he's a lawyer and he knows that everything that we get in this country, we get in this country through hard work. Okay. But, but just a minute. He has actually touched the point. I said it. I said it's not a complex matrix in, in appreciating Kenya's politics. A formation on one side and another formation on the other side. 
and some of us are pawns. You know, you're told, uh, like we, we call ourselves top ups. I mean, Nasser likes to call small tribes top ups. So you, you align yourself where your interests are best suited. And one of this um, coalition aligns itself on a phobia that is created around the Kikui community. So it's a galvanizing point. So what happens is, they, they, so you find here, Olekin and I started to say that how true tribes don't own this country. As long as the basis for political competition remains ethnic, you don't have to meander. You don't start fighting the ethnic groups. You start to meander a, a discourse for national cohesion, that you orient your politics in terms of issues orientation. I was speaking issues in my politics in Mombasa. That's the thing that disappointed me most. Uh, I was speaking issues. I, I released an extraordinary manifesto. But I, I, I forgot that I, all I needed to say in many of the platforms to appease the Baba base was that you loved Baba a lot more. So yeah. what you need to do is no, just to put on a cap. That's, that's, that's what uh, Sanjo did. I think, I think you what put on a cap, written, uh, you written uh, Rao, and you, you say Mimin Takufa, Wajile Raila, and stuff like that. And the issues are lost around there. So when, when you arrange a, a formation of ethnic groups and call it whatever you want to call it and another formation of ethnic groups it is evident that one of those groupings as per the, our as per our construct of politics and democratic competition will emerge at the top okay so you can't constantly be putting us on this cycle that you need reforms the same reforms that you talked about you are revisiting the same things no. over and again oh, hold on hold on hold on M monica you have some numbers for me, right? The question we've been asking tonight, gentlemen, look at these numbers. Uh, are we heading towards a Newsom Carter uh, kind of government going forward? 26% of you say yes. 74% of you say no. And this, on the heels of Raila Odinga's interview before he took off for the States, saying that he wants an interim government for six months made up <laughs> of, the, of the Jubilee and the opposition. But, Senator. But well, uh, and, uh, let, me, let me just remind you one thing. That right now, the movement, the NASA coalition, mm -hmm will not allow Raila Molo Dinga to discuss anything other than how we're going to have a free and fair election in 90 days. That's it. So this issue of saying uh, Anusum Kate, I, I think you're misinterpreting what... You think uh, so? Yes, I do. What because mean, I, think, what? I think what Raila meant is that he's looking at the issue of the Constitution. He's looking, we're going to achieve every means through the Constitution. And having a caretaker government doesn't necessarily translate into Anusum Kate. You remember very well that Anusu Mkate in this country, we had it for five years. This is not Anusu Mkate. But we just want time for us to ensure that the, the playing field is leveled so that one person does not have an advantage over the other. If you look at recently, there was an article in the paper that said that uh, the Jubilee administration, specifically Uhuru Mugai Kenyatta and William Ruto, spent 1.2 billion shillings in their travel across this country. Most of it was campaigning. So if we level the playing field, then we can have a free and fair election. So NASA... Let me, let me tell you okay. something. Let me so say, it's let not me, about a uh, Kati. Let me tell you. That is Raila, Raila went further in that interview, and I listened to it. He said, even if the Supreme Court says otherwise and affirms the election of Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto, it will still not take away the fact. So almost all these no, issues... No, no, no. You got it wrong. He said, he you got it wrong. Let me correct said, you. So what let me Raila finish. said... Let me, say no, no, let let me correct finish. him because I don't want him to get away with it. <laughs> yeah. What Raila meant by saying... <laughs> meant or he said. What he meant and what he actually said is that the problem we have currently in this country is a political crisis, not a legal problem. Okay, so what's so your point? You see, where you, we, are always, we all go to the, the, the school. What the teacher says is interpreted differently by the students. But for me, I did not interpret what he meant. I interpreted what he said. He said that even if the Supreme Court was to decide in the affirmative that this election was in line, in tandem with the Constitution, they'll still progress. And all these issues that Oled Oledima uh, is, okay. talk Ol Olekina is talking about uh, it ha are being canvassed from the turnout issues to the issues of uh, numbers or, or, or the 3.5 million vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the 7.5 million by the IBC, mm -hmm. uh, the issues of 25 counties not voting. Mm -hmm. uh, so why would you agree with Maraga? on one set of issues when he, uh, he, he, he rules in your favor and say it will matter little when he rules again on the same issue differently. So I think, I think no. here is, is, uh, is uh, are people trying so to generate saying, a crisis. You're saying either way there's going to be... Did you, did you, you should listen to the entire interview. He said that these, these actions about forming an interim government, about the, whatever else that they want to, in, to, to, to undertake, are irrespective of the Supreme Court decision. Senator. <laughs> you know, it's very interesting to hear the Senator speak here, because I think what we want is Kenyans. 
is that we want a country where everyone is respected. And I know, I know Who is this. not respecting you? Raila Amolo Odinga is not doing this because of himself. He's doing this so that he can also guarantee me an opportunity to be president of this country tomorrow if I choose to be. So it's not, you know, people need to look at it differently. And I don't think that... Uh, you can't be president I of had, this country uh, right now? You know, I had uh, the senator well. saying that uh, why would you agree with Maranga if he rules it this way and ruled it differently? What, who tells you that Maranga will rule a certain way? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. So that's what I'm think, saying. I don't think we ought He's to... Saying, whichever even way he if ruled. Yes. the Supreme Court affirmed the decision, meaning that will be a different decision from the nullification. So well, he says even if they did, so he will yeah. still put much for, okay, move forward. Sir, uh, but uh, you see, there are these issues. This, you know, there are things. There's the concept of, of you. You say you say so much truth to yourself, that you see you see no other truth in others, that you you convince yourself. So here, Olekina thinks he is, he does not have an opportunity to lead this country. He feels that there's somebody who's disrespecting him in somewhere. In an ethnic supremacy? Yeah. No, I don't. You have no chance. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. You have no chance. Where there's ethnic supremacy? No. Because if, if, this, if this community says it's only us, and okay. then next five years it is you, then how are the other people going to be? You know, See. I'm surprised that my brother here would talk about the issues of Mombasa. Yet he doesn't understand that Mombasa is owned by a few individuals. The land there, since independence, who owned the land in Mombasa? Who does? It's one big family, you oh, know. Come on, come on, Nitama. I mean, let us be honest. You're from Mombasa. Seriously. Hey, listen, I mean, I, 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 he has <laughs> now become an expert. And uh, listen, it, it's that, not about issue, being an expert, issue, it's about being factual. about elites across spectrum of tribes, a, a, a given few owning a super class of, of wealth is a problem not in Mombasa alone or in Kenya. It is in the United States. You say that the, the two one percent few on almost sixty percent. <laughs> it, it it is it is an inequality question. The inequality question needs interventions with the constitution provides for social justice, uh, social nets, issues of uh, uh, of uh, equity, so that there is there is asymmetry in the in the in the division of resources. So. It is not I, the, the people who, who are said to have to, to have to have a wealth in Mombasa uh, is the Arab community, the Asian community, the Kikuyu community, people with capital. It's, it is it is it is it's in, it's in public preserve, mm. and this is across ethnicity. It is the fact that we have uh, we have an imbalanced socio-economic structure in this country that has have favored a few. So what we need to do is to balance it. But but when when, when that does not mean you start to base your, 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 your mathematics in terms of, of, of ethnicity. You base it in terms of ideology. Indeed. You know, you know what is surprising me is that the former senator here was very emotional about the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Report, which really outlined all the injustices, all the problems that we have in this society. And the coastal region was focused in that report. And now, since he's in bed with Jubilee, he does not want to admit that. The problem of inequalities in this country are brought about by you know, the people who took over immediately after the colonial masters left home. You know, I, I always say, let me finish, mm. I always say, uh, the current leadership we have in this country, they make the colonial masters look like philanthropists. You know? Because what happened in Laikipia? In Laikipia, the Maasai, that land belonged to the Maasai. Mm. But immediately after independence, you know what happened? Mzee Njomo Kenyatta invited people from his community and said, come and buy land. The Maasai did not understand anything about buying land. And they became absentee landlords. So the Maasai continued living in that area knowing that it's theirs. But now look at them. They are being killed. So you're blaming, you know? uh, you're blaming so the think, people who I think came what, and bought. What happens is this. Mm. We've got issues in these countries which are not resolved. We've got the Truth, Justice and Reconciliation Report which was never implemented. Okay? It is something that people don't want to deal with because it is very sensitive. And unless we accept that, we've got a country, uh, our neighboring country, Rwanda, that accepted it and they, w they fixed their problems. We but, have to actually yeah. welcome the fact that, you know, yeah. we may not always get justice, but there are certain things that we have to work yeah, towards equality. I, 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 have, I have to, because uh, Olekida has been constantly on uh, attacking my character. Yes. 
Yes. Oh, no. no, you have a, you have an interpretation uh, issue. Raila says one thing, we all understand it the same way, Lekin understands it differently. I talk about the inequalities in the country, he understands that I have opposition to the TGRC report. That's an interpretation issue. Olakina must learn to interpret what is being said for what it is. So for me, the Truth, Justice, Reconciliation report is, is something I contributed time and, and, in, and, and research. In fact, the implementation of that report will take this country a pace further in terms of healing some of the historical wounds, in terms of land inequalities. Uh, but, but for him, uh, I'm appreciating that there is a contextual issue that is, is the inequality gap in Kenya, the third most unequal country in the world after Brazil and South Africa is Kenya. So I'm saying you have to cure this systemically. So, so you have to come and say that one group thinks it owns everything. There are groups that own everything, even there are few Maasai's who own enormous land and wealth in Narok. Mm -hmm. There are one or two Maasai's who own enormous land and wealth in Kajiado. There are one or two lawyers who own enormous land and, and wealth in Kakamega. It's, it's an, an equality question. That the, and some of it is through lutocracy. Some of it probably is out of ignorance. But, but it is a, a question that needs to be addressed. He, he thinks I do not know the Maasai landowners, people who almost own the entire county. Name them. It, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is in, it is in public domain. Yeah. Okay, gentlemen, let's switch gears a little bit. Um, Supreme Court. Got 14 days. Less than that now. Now, yeah, countdown. Your thoughts? I think they have a lot of work to do. Um, you think they have a case? I, I do. I do believe they have a, a beautiful case to deal with because uh, what happened in Narok, and I don't wish to prosecute the matter uh, on television because it's in the hand of the Supreme Court, but I think the truth of the, of the matter is that since this was an opinion poll for Jubilee, NASA did not choose not to participate. No, so we had no. no we didn't. NASA withdrew. We withdrew. We, we choose not to participate. So that's the same thing. So we didn't have agents. So when you leave just a field for a few people to play, then there's a lot of mistakes. They'll make a lot of mistakes. Do you mistakes. think it was a miscalculation on NASA's part to withdraw? Do you think, no, honestly? No, I don't. I don't. I think we were very categorical. We said we had those irreducible minimums that had to be met by IBC. We actually said, open the servers. They didn't. And it was a little bit hypocritical for IEBC on the Jubilee opinion poll on the 26th to say, now come and see our servers, we've opened our servers. Why didn't they do that on, for the 26th, uh, for the 8th election? So if they really wanted to prove to Kenyans that they have done everything right, the first thing that IEBC should have done is to open the servers of the August 8th. Hassan, yeah, for, the the yeah. yeah, for the same reason that I, I want to pick from what El Akina said, which I really appreciate. As I traversed Mombasa on that particular 26th, there were only Jubilee agents and observers and the, and the polling clerks. Mombasa reported back a voter turnout of about 80,000, with Uhuru Kenyatta getting 78,000. Mm -hmm. If it were in our premise or a province to steal, we'll have returned a 300,000 margin. <laughs> So let, let us. No, no, no. So I'm telling you, if there was that, that latitude, and it, it, is, it is only uh, one vote that is being cast, and there's only one agent, if we had wanted, we'll have returned 300,000 no, no, votes. No, no. So I can tell you for a fact, uh, part of these things will be dispelled by the Supreme Court. In fact, I am very elated that they have gone to the Supreme Court. Uh, they, they even have brought in Raila as an indirect petitioner. By trying to say he's a respondent, you are giving him an opportunity to prosecute his case while not really prosecuted. Because most of these civil society organizations, if you look at them, they are of that narrative. Mm. So uh, they will give, get an excellent opportunity uh, to demonstrate that the turnout is the 3.5 that they said it was, that um, certain other travesties were, were create, were happened across the country. And then there's a very interesting thing, Jeff. All international observers said the elections were free and fair. They said the same okay. thing in the first round. Yes, they said the same thing in the first round, I agree. But they, they, they said there are certain things that they look at. Jeff, let me explain. Elog, Elog. And let me explain something. said the elections were free and fair. Mm. This time was very cautious about taking a decision that could, that could affect them locally. So almost all other local observers gave some, lo some, some middle ground. 
assessment that it was difficult to say whether the elections were free and fair because of the absence of observers from other political parties or other candidates. So I think what, what happens, these matters now are competently before the Supreme Court. We trusted the Maraga courts uh, in, on 8th of, after the brief, after post 8th of August. We want to trust them again that they will do a good job. So let us, these matters will be canvassed. Those who have evidence will, will bring it there. Olekina said what he saw in Narok. There's an opportunity to go and say in the Supreme Court what you saw in Narok. It's easy to say it in a political platform. I know it for a fact. But once you're put, put taken to strict proof, then the ball game changes. No, let me, let me totally. just respond to that. I think, uh, I think it's important for Kenyans out there to understand the systems which are being used. Because sometimes, you know, we use big uh, names, the Kim system. And people don't really understand what was the work of the Kim system. And essentially, what the Kim system was all about is identifying a voter through a biometric system. Mm -hmm. Now, in the event that that Kim system does not identify you through a biometric system, there is an alphanumeric uh, alternative yeah. for you to be able to enter your ID. So it is a little bit interesting for people to say that, for Chabukati to say that between four and five, there were about, about what, four million people who voted. You know, you could easily get a list of ID numbers. Since you are the one, you are the referee, you are the, the agent, you are the clerk. I mean, it's all about you. You can just sit down there and enter all the ID numbers. It is identified you. So the biggest problem we have here is that when we, as a country, we have systems. Those systems, we spend a lot of taxpayers' money. They have got to be temper-proof. You cannot tell me that four million people do not have fingerprints could not be identified through the Kim system. So that is why I see a big problem, and that's why I'm saying that I believe that um, so, there's a big case because fewer people were identified through biometrics. You don't think they'll throw it out? I think they will. I think they will nullify the elections. You do? I think so. Uh, let me tell I will you, not uh, be surprised. What I, what I think I had Chebuka to say after the elections is that he opened up uh, the Kim's, the Kenya, integrated election management system. Mm -hmm. It's not a complex thing. It just is about voter identification, and uh, biomet uh, bi biometric yeah. and voter transmission. It's only, it has only two, uh, two, two issues. You go, boom, you are identified, yeah. you vote manually, cast your ballot, and then after that you scan the form, pop, send it to, to, the, to, the, to the national level. Right. So for me, it's, it's very straightforward. He opened that system. Uh, for scrutiny, for public scrutiny, and I think they also gave the numbers of those people who were not identified biometrically. It, I can't remember what the number is, but they were definitely yeah. not 4 million. All right, gentlemen, I want to take a quick break, come back, and Senator, I want you to explain to me this national resistance movement. Explain it to me, all our viewers, those who don't understand, and the People's Assembly again. Is this Bunge La Wananchi? I mean, what, what, what is it? <laughs> we want to know. And of course, we want to talk about the Maasai issues. Absolutely. The cows being killed. How many so far? 2,000. 2,000 cows? cows? You know this for a fact? Yes. Come on, you just... 2,000 two cows. And of Recently, course... Recently, there were 300. But prior to that, about 1,700 cows have been killed. And then, Sen uh, Senator, we want to talk about uh, secession. That's exactly what you told me and invited me to speak about. <laughs> <laughs> before, before you took me into this interview well, government <laughs> thing. But I, have, I at least have answers well, to everything. Secession. Is, is, does that make sense? Yes. It's all Come about, on, man. Yes, it is. Se secession was just an, an attention seeking gimmick. Se no way. Would no you way. be for secession? Absolutely. I am for succession. So, I am. So secession. what? Secession. I am for it. Let's wait. Uh, we'll take the break. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Keep tweeting at Hassan Omar H at <laughs> Ledama at Kenanga Jeff. The hashtag is JK Live. We're going to read your tweets. We'll get a Facebook post. We'll get all that coming up very shortly. And also these issues very pertinent to our country moving forward. Jeff Kenanga Live takes a break. We'll be back in a moment. Relax with Safaricom CCTV backup, knowing that you're in control. 